Hello everyone, today I'm going to tell you the basics of quantum entanglement. I promise you that after watching this video, you will be able to astound everyone with the amazing things you can tell them. So please like and subscribe and let's get right into it. To understand what the entanglement theory really is, you have to know what lies at the very heart of quantum physics. Quantum physics is a theory used to explain numerous weird things which scientists fail to explain with their standard theories. Even though there are dozens of branches of quantum physics, you could sum it up as being an explanation of why everything works at a submolecular level. And I really mean everything, even why your screen is working at this very moment. When I say submolecular, I mean things like atoms, photons, and electrons. One of its most famous and most important theories is how an electron can be a wave or a particle. Confusing, I know. And when it is a wave, an electron exhibits its most baffling properties. Think about one of those heart rate monitors, and imagine it had just a single heartbeat on it. The highest point on that heartbeat would be where the electron has the highest probability of being, and vice versa. This means that the lowest point of the heartbeat has the lowest chance of the electron being there. So does this mean that technically, an electron can be anywhere within its wave? Yes. Yes, it does. An experiment was conducted some time ago which showed this. Imagine a piece of Swiss cheese. Now imagine that you were to throw a bucket full of electrons at that Swiss cheese. Let us assume for a moment that the Swiss cheese is infinitely large, so nothing will go around the corners. Most of the electrons would just get stuck on the cheese, but some others will pass through the holes and onto a wall behind it. You would expect the electrons to form a dotted pattern in line with the holes of the cheese, but for some reason this is not so. Instead, you see electrons scattered all over the wall, even in parts where the cheese should be blocking it. This is not because the Swiss cheese has tiny holes in it, which we can't see. It is because electrons are also waves. The waves would combine at the holes and expand again as soon as they are through. This means that they can spread out all over the wall behind. However, it would also leave some hot spots where more waves combine than in other places. But it doesn't stop there. If you look very closely to check where it is, it's as if the electron knows that you are looking for it, so it decides on a position it should be in, and at that point, it is a particle. Now, before we get into the real deal, you might hear the phrase quantum particle once or twice. A quantum particle is, at a very basic and pretty inaccurate level, just a spinning particle. What is special about this spin? Well, a quantum particle is said to be spinning both ways at the same time, that is, clockwise and counterclockwise. There are two types of spinning particles, but that is for another video. So now that you know, we can get into the entanglement theory. The entanglement theory is basically just what it sounds like. Scientists called Schrödinger theorize that if two quantum particles were to bump into one another, they would bond. Even though they would still be physically separated and would just go on their way, they would also have made some weird connection, which would not come to show until you looked at them. Now here's the really weird part. Schrodinger said that if you measure the direction it is spinning, then it will adjust itself and choose which way it wants to spin. And as if that wasn't weird enough, he also stated that the other particle will then instantly adjust itself to be the spinning of the opposite way. This was a revelation, as Einstein had always said that nothing could travel faster than light, including information. However, this theory meant that two particles could instantly communicate with one another when the one was checked. And an instant is quite a bit faster than light speed, wouldn't you say? Imagine you had two coins. You would put one in a case and send it to your friend living on the other side of the world. Then, you would flip them at the same time 
However, your friend would not check the outcome, only you would. Let us assume you got heads. This would mean that the other coin has to be tails. Entanglement works in a very similar way, but instead imagine that the coins are always hovering in midair, flick flipping over indefinitely. Then someone decides to come over and grab it out of the air. The other coin would stop flipping and instantly reposition itself to be the opposite of the first one. This of course made Einstein pretty mad, and he began heavily disagreeing with quantum physics. Not only did this mean that his precious theory of relativity would be incorrect, but also that something could be determined by a person looking at it. He was of the opinion that everything in the universe is predetermined, and that it was always one way, regardless of if you were looking or not. Einstein imagined it to be more like a pair of gloves. If you ship one of those gloves in a sealed opaque box to Antarctica, and the other one would be given to you. As soon as you open the case, and you see which glove you received, say, the left one, you know that the other case must contain the right one. There never was any magic to it. No weirdness. The particles, or gloves, were always opposites. Stuart Friedman and John Clauser conducted the first experiment to prove this, and they were successful. So, does this mean that entanglement is a real well, there were multiple assumptions made to fill in the gaps in knowledge while conducting the experiment, so we still don't know for sure. However, through educated guessing, lots of math and theories, it seems that the entanglement theory is inevitably true. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something from this video. Leave a like, subscribe, and see you again next time.